Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's quick oscilloscope tutorial time. Now, I'm going to take a look at one particular feature of the oscilloscope that a lot of people really don't have much idea about. They find it a bit mysterious. In fact, a lot of people have never used it and, well, quite frankly, they don't know what it does. And it can be found as a dedicated knob on many higher end, in fact, most higher end, older analog oscilloscopes, but especially on new digital scopes, they will have this option that a lot of people go, well, what's that? I'm not really sure. They might twiddle it, but they don't really understand what it does. What is it? It's trigger hold off. Let's take a look at it. First up, a bit of a background refresher on oscilloscope triggering. Now, this is going to be in reference to the old-fashioned analog oscilloscope, the old CRT cathode ray oscilloscope, because the concept starts there and it, it carries on over to digital scopes, which are effectively the same thing. The concept's the same, but it just um, the background works better with the analog scope because that's where it comes from. Now. As you, we've got an analog CRT display here, which draws a waveform on the display. Now, the triggering system, which I might have to do another blog on just, just general triggering, but all we're interested in is the trigger hold-off control this time. But the trigger point, what it does is that the, uh, c the beam inside the CRT sweeps across the display, which we'll look at down here. But it sweeps across from left to right, and it draws the waveform on the display. Now your vertical amplifier, the input channel to your oscilloscope, is the one that causes the vertical or Y deflection like that. But the X uh, axis or the horizontal time base is based on a fixed uh, ramp. Basically it's based on a linear, it's an integrated sawtooth ramp like this. So it's a linear sweep. It's also called the sweep, okay? It's the horizontal deflection sweep or it's the voltage that's applied to the horizontal deflection plates which causes the beam to sweep across the display. And that's a sawtooth waveform like this. So once the oscilloscope triggers, okay, at this point, if you set your trigger level to say this Y value here on the positive edge like this, then the once that trigger is received, then it will start sweeping. It, it, this voltage will increase and the beam will sweep across the display like that, drawing your waveform. Now, when it gets to the end over here like this, okay, it's got to somehow get the beam back to here. It's got a, what's called a retrace. So it retraces its step all the way back here and it does that very quickly, hence the very quick ramp down like that. I've exaggerated the time period there and you don't want that to be displayed when it's retracing that beam back. Otherwise, you'd get a horizontal line on your display, and that's no good. So what they do is they blanket like this when it's retracing, and then it arms, then the trigger circuitry arms again, and it's ready for the next sweep. And it does that again and again and again for your repeating signal. But what happens is there is actually an extra hold-off time here, and that's what that analog hold-off control on your analog oscilloscope does it actually increases this time uh, period up to a certain point each oscilloscope's different some will be calibrated others will be like in actual time units so um, you'll be able to actually set an exact hold off time others will just be a just a simple analog control which allow you to increase that time now the hold off time will be in addition to that retrace period so when you're uh, beam sweeps across like this and gets to the end of the waveform instead of just immediately Retracing back like that what it does well. It still retraces back, but instead of rearming straight away Rearming that trigger circuitry ready for the next trace It just holds off and that's why it's called trigger hold off because it effectively disables your uh, trigger signal again for a fixed period of time now, of course, that hold-off time must at least be as long as the retrace period to sweep that back and plus a little bit extra for it to settle before that trigger circuitry resets. But you can actually extend that. But why would you want to do that? Is an update rate important? Why would you want to sit there doing nothing, displaying nothing 
on your CRT screen, potentially missing um, information, missing uh, data, when you can just rearm it and go straight away. Well, there's a good reason to it, and there's some important benefits. That's why trigger hold off is an important concept that you should understand to really know your oscilloscope. So let's take a look at it. One more thing, if you're talking about digital oscilloscopes, then it's effectively the same thing. It really it operates exactly the same, except there is no retrace, because it doesn't need to physically fly back the beam back to the left side of the CRT like that. So really there is no retrace period, but there might be a processing time and stuff like that before it can actually uh, trigger. And of course, a, a one of the benefits of a digital oscilloscope is that you get... Um, pre and post trigger so it will typically trigger trigger in the middle like this but really the hold off concept is exactly the same after it's finished capturing the data it will hold off triggering again for a certain predetermined amount of time and the real benefit with digital scopes is that they all have really um, high resolution digital control for the hold off time it allows you to set a precise value now let's take a look at an analog oscilloscope here. Now unfortunately this isn't the best example because this is an analog digital combi scope so it's a bit complicated on the display here but what we're interested in is the dedicated control down here. Now it says delay position but that's only for the delayed time base. If I turn it on there we go it's actually the hold off control in regular mode of operation it's hold off. Now it's got a dedicated button so you think it's a pretty darn important control and it is so let's take a look at the screen here when we operate the uh, delay control now if you remember that sweep waveform we had before okay I've got it set to a very fast sweep speed so you can't see it retrace or anything like that hold off is off it's set to or or it's set to the minimum often they won't have an off they'll just have minimum okay but let's turn the time base down let's slow it down until we can physically see that dot sweep across the display like that okay now if I now turn on this well first of all you'll notice that as soon as it gets to the end bang it retraces straight back like that and it, it actually goes slightly further than the screen that's why there is a slight actual delay there but let's now turn off this hold off now you can't notice much at the moment it looks pretty similar but if I really turn that up okay adjust it all the way up look Bang, it waits. One, two, three, and then it starts again. You see, that's probably the maximum for this control because it, it's not really a fancy hold-off control at all. But you can see, it sweeps across, then there's an extra delay before it rearms. Because I've got this in auto-sweep mode, okay, which means it doesn't actually need a trigger input. It doesn't need a waveform to actually trigger it. But the concept is the same if you've got a waveform fed into it. And just to prove that's the case, let's actually get a real waveform on here, okay? Now we're actually going to switch it to normal mode here, so it's normal triggering. So if the trigger isn't there, there's no display at all, there's no trigger, there's no sweep, nothing happens. But if we allow it to trigger, we can't actually, this is an analog scope, so we can't actually physically see the trigger level here. Actually we can if I turn the readout on, there you go. See how the trigger goes above? Once it once that trigger point there goes above the waveform, the peak of the waveform, you don't get anything at all. And as you can see, it's come down and down and down. And because we're uh, triggering on the positive slope, then it starts to trigger and it on the positive edge of the waveform like that. But anyway, let's uh, turn this hold off control so you can see it does exactly the same thing here. Let me turn uh, that readout down and bit it's a bit distracting and let's turn this hold off up and notice I'm not changing the time base and bingo there it is after it's finished bang it's got to wait it's got that hold off time and it must wait before it gets the next trigger I know what you're thinking whoop de doo what's the point of trigger hold off that didn't show us anything it just delayed the sweep what point is that well there is really no point for simple repetitive waveforms like that sine wave you use. So let's take a look at another example 
where it's actually going to be of great value. Now, let's take the case of a digital signal here, but it doesn't have to be digital. It could easily be some complex analog signal or something like that. But this is a much easier example to work with than the one I'll show you on the display. Now, let's say you've got a burst of data like this separated by a long uh, period of, of nothing, really. And then there's another burst of data. And it might be the same burst or it might be the data that you want to look at. Now, if you don't have the hold off set at all, okay, if you've just got the trigger set, positive edge trigger set in the middle like that, well, it could trigger off this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. It doesn't really know where to trigger. It's got no idea at all. The scope hasn't got a clue. This edge over here or this one in the middle of the waveform is exactly the same as this one here. It, it doesn't know. So with no hold off at all, what you get on your display, you've probably seen it before when you probe digital signals. It's just garbage, really. You can see the positive and the negative level, and you can see a couple of uh, traces in there. If you zoom in, you can see some edges and stuff, but it just jumps around and gives you a completely jumbled display. And you don't want that. You want to actually trigger off a fixed pattern like that, and you want to see the gaps in between here, and you want to do all that sort of stuff. Well, that's what trigger hold off can do. If you increase that hold off time from the minimum or from zero, you switch it on and let's say the time period from here, from here to here is say 100 microseconds and you know it's 100 microseconds. You don't have to know. You can just in keep, keep increasing the hold off time until you get the display you want. But let's say you did know that that dead time in there was 100 microseconds. Well, you might set your hold off time to just slightly less than that, 90 microseconds, 95 microseconds. And what that does to the display, uh, what that does to the scope, is that it the trigger will only trigger if there's 95, a minimum of 95 um, uh, microseconds of hold time, of, of dead time before that. Otherwise, it just ignores those trigger points. So what it's going to do is it's going to capture that first trigger point after that hold off time. And the result is... Bingo, a magically stable display where you're actually able to see not only the individual uh, packet down here, but the, but the entire waveform display if you turn the horizontal out far enough and you get a stable display. Magic! Let's take a look at a real example where it does exactly that. Now, what I've got on the analog scope here is this same, a very similar digital burst signal. It's actually a bit more complicated, but as you can see, um, if I adjust the time base here, then really um, it's just, you know, it's just digital data. It's just really digital, uh, you know, garbage, really. You, you can't see much at all. You can see it's transitioning and all that sort of stuff and everything's just fine. But really you can't make out that there's actually uh, packets there. So that's no, of no use at all. So what, what we want to do is we want to use the hold off control here. So let's turn the hold off control up. I don't know exactly what the time period is, but you can see the display kind of shift in there. And, way, bingo, there it is. We eventually hit a hold off time. If we go further than that, boom, it's gone again. So there will be that window there where it, it just delayed enough that we could see the difference in those packets. There's the, there's the individual packet there. Magic, we've now stably triggered on that packet of data. And you can do the same thing on a complex analog waveform as well. Now there's actually one side effect of the hold off control that is a bit hard to get on the display, but I'll see if I can do it. Um, because when you when you add trigger hold off, then it is then the display is not retracing as often and as fast on an analog scope. So the intensity of your display is actually going to dim. So I've got no hold off or minimum at the moment. Now, actually, see if you can remember that trace brightness and see if it dims when I turn up. There we go. It actually dims when because there's not as many retraces on the display. Now, let's feed the exact same signal into a modern digital oscilloscope like this Rigol DS 1052. E here. It's only a low cost scope, but it'll give you an idea. The Even the high end ones will have exactly the same functionality. As you can see, the same signal. It doesn't know where to trigger from. Because we, if we go into the trigger menu over here, we're only triggering off regular uh, positive slope, edge triggering. It's an auto sweep. And it's just, 
it's not really doing anything at all. It's quite boring. So um, really, it's it's not doing much at all. Now, if we change the time base here, the horizontal, we can get to a point where we can see, start to see, that there is some sort of packet type information in there. You can see those dead periods, but you certainly can't trigger off it. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's this magic button up here. It's the auto button. Can't you just hit that and it auto scales everything and it should trigger, set up your trigger and the whole works? Well, let's give it a try, shall we? Here we go. It's trying to figure itself out and bingo. Okay, it's set it up. It's triggered. Now, like, if we, we could have gone like that and let's, let's hit it again, change the time base. Boom, right? And it will auto scale like that. But has it triggered off those packets? No, because it's not smart enough to do it. It just doesn't realize. But if we go into the trigger menu here and we go to setup, it will have, as all modern digital scopes do, they will have a hold off option. Now, if you reset it, which is the default value when you're using the oscilloscope normally, the hold value in this case is 500 nanoseconds minimum. Now, let's increase that, shall we? Let's uh, select that and Let's turn it up. And I happen to know that, that uh, if we put in about 45 odd microseconds, that should allow us to trigger off this sucker because that's what that dead time is. So, well, we're getting about, no, we're getting there. So let's, let's go up. Well, bingo, there we go, about 40 microseconds. And there, bingo, our trigger hold off has worked perfectly and we're actually triggering off that so you can that live display like that is incredibly valuable so that you can actually um, see if there's any glitches in there in real time and stuff like that and of course you can uh, stop it and then zoom into your data of course and then you can analyze it but that's just a way that you can get triggering on a complex waveform using trigger hold off it's brilliant and that's what it's for and just to show that hold off again on the digital scope or the effect of it, uh, I've just got some noise. I'm just measuring a noise signal here so you can see the updating on the display going flash, 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 because I've got the minimum hold time. Now let's change that hold off time to, let's change it, say, let's go massive. Let's go up to a second and you'll see it. Oh, there we go, about a second. One spot on a second, actually. And bingo, one, two, three, four, five, because it's not triggering, it's only going to trigger, well in this case because it's very quick, um, it's effectively once per second, bang, 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 like that, it's holding off the trigger for that one second. Just for kicks, let's try that on a more upmarket digital scope, in this case the brand new Agilent Infini Vision 2000 series. Now I've already set that hold off time, so we're getting our packets no problems at all, we're seeing that data. And it's just brilliant, not a problem. But let's try that magic auto scale button, shall we? That everyone thinks is so wonderful. Let's try it on this scope and see if it does anything. Here we go. There you go. It's it's hopeless. It doesn't know what to do either. And it's not surprising, really. It just did the same as the Rigol. So what we've got to do is we've got to go into, of course, we've got to go into our uh, trigger mode and the minimum hold off time. There it is, 40 nanoseconds and we've got to adjust that now it's a bit touchy this one it can jump around the place if you uh, turn it too fast so but if we get to 40 there we go bingo there it is we've got our stable display using our hold off control magic now just to clarify that one bit further what hold time will actually work is uh, actually the period of the entire repetitive cycle that you're trying to actually capture and that window in there is the value that will actually work. So I've set up the vertical cursors here. I've set one right at the start of the packet which I want to measure and let's go, let's move the other cursor here and as you can see it should, the holder should work anywhere from about 40 microseconds up to just before about 47 microseconds or thereabouts so any hold off time in that period should give you a nice stable triggered display like we're seeing here and this is actually a live display it's not actually that's actually captured okay and that's actually live so let's try that and see if it works 
And here we go. Let's try and prove that. The hold off time, 37 microseconds. So all, all before 37 microseconds, it doesn't work. But after, we should hit about 40. Or, oh, bingo, there we go. 39.6 is near enough because we didn't measure that absolutely precisely. And it should work up to about 47 or thereabouts, maybe with a bit of error, but it's still going. No, it's still going. But there we go. It's starting to starting to jump around there because we're getting a couple of other edges. It's triggering off, and then 50. 50 it's lost the plot completely, and after that, it's just not going to work at all. And then, of course, we're able to capture that and zoom into our heart's content, and we've got a nice, beautifully triggered uh, complex waveform. So next time you're playing around with complex waveforms like this, be it digital or analog, just have a play around with the trigger hold off. There's no need to put up with that crap. Uh, display which just goes all over the place sure we can just start uh, stop that and capture the data but it's good to have your live uh, you know if if you've got enough if you've got a digital story scope with enough memory sure you can just capture it like that and everything's fine but really uh, you, you can't beat having that stable triggered display for live viewing so just play around with the hold off control next time you're using the scope I hope that was worthwhile see ya